What do credit scores measure? What does a poor credit score actually say about you? Today, we're going to explain what that three-digit number really means, what it tells a lender, and what it doesn't. I have spoken with people who say that their credit score represents their integrity or their trustworthiness as a person. It shows other people that they are willing to pay back their obligations. In short, these folks think that a credit score is an estimation of them as people. This is just not true. And it's kind of disturbing, actually, to think that you as a person could be defined by a three-digit number. So if a credit score isn't an accurate reflection of your character, what is it? Maybe it's just simply a measure of your likelihood to pay back a loan. That might be a bit closer to the truth, but believe it or not, that's not right either. The credit scoring agency's models are actually meant to quantify the percentage of people who are likely to default on at least one credit account within the next 24 months. That sounds a little convoluted, so let me give you an example that will hopefully make it a bit more clear. Imagine a large group of people who all have an 810 credit score. Even though the range goes up to 850, an 810 is a functionally perfect credit score, which means you can get anything you need at the lowest rate possible. In this hypothetical case, 0.2% of people with a perfect credit score will default on a loan in the coming 24 months. People who have a credit score 40 points lower, 770, will default at twice the rate, 0.4%. It doubles again for every 40 point drop. So 0.8% of people with 730 will default. 1.6% of people with a 690 will default. These, of course, are low numbers, which explains why people consider anything above a 700 to be a prime or a good credit score. That doubling really impacts lower scores, though. 3.2% of people with a 650 will default. 6.4% of people with a 610 almost 13% of people with a 570, and nearly 26% of people with a 530 credit score will default on a loan within the next 24 months. This explains a lot, doesn't it? If a bank charges 6% interest on a mortgage, you can see why they would be hesitant to lend money to a group of people where even 2% of them are expected to have trouble paying their bills within a couple of years. It's hard to make money when there are some out there who can't pay back the principal, much less the interest. But here's another way to look at it. A vast majority of people with even a 530 credit score will still meet their obligations in the coming 24 months. If you have a poor credit score, it doesn't actually say you won't pay back your obligations. It merely says that a percentage of people like you will struggle. And let's remember, struggling to pay back bills may not have anything to do with irresponsibility. People can struggle to pay their bills because of losing a job or medical problems or other unexpected expenses. All your credit score says about you is that a number of people whose credit scores look like yours are likely to default. Most of the people won't default even with those lower scores. Lenders look at these scores and have a good idea of what their default rate is going to be, but they can't know whether Jill or Tom or Sophie or Frank will be the ones to default. Finally, remember that credit scores are rear view mirror metrics. They are looking at what happened in the past. It makes sense that credit scoring agencies are looking at things like late payments, accounts and collections, and utilization rate and things like that. These things are likely to predict whether someone will struggle with a future bill. So if you're working on your credit score, focus on the things that will show credit scoring agencies that you are a low credit risk. Make on-time payments and don't max out your credit. Your credit score doesn't measure you as a person, your integrity, your character, or your responsibility. Credit scores are cold, impersonal numbers that are merely meant to give lenders an idea of how many people might default on a loan in the next two years. If you want to learn more about credit scores, lending, and personal finance, visit us at the Yukon Project. If you have any specific questions, post them in the comments below, and maybe we'll make a future video about it. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to our channel.